Okay guys, we've moved on to a new progression. This is an R&B flavored progression. I'm going to tell you what the chords are first so you get an idea of where we're playing. We're playing at the third position or third fret. And the first chord of our progression is a G7 chord. Okay? And the notes in that are G, D, F, B. We have a D again and a G. G7. The second chord that I'm playing is a B flat seven, so we've moved up three frets from our G, okay, to B flat seven. Same notes as the the G or the same shape, and then I'm moving two more frets up to C seven. So our chord progression is basically G seven, B flat seven, C seven. Okay. Now we could play uh, the automatic thing. I guess we could play over this would be a G minor pentatonic scale. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to shift this up a gear and I'm going to drop you straight into the realm of playing arpeggios exclusively to outline these chords. So we're going to learn a G7 arpeggio, we're going to play a B flat 7 arpeggio and a C7 arpeggio all in position. We're not going to move out of third position. So you're going to learn to play between all of these chords and outline each of these chords with their arpeggios in position, okay? Now, I don't want you to be scared by saying, well, arpeggios, they can sound linear and, you know, one, three, five, flat, seven kind of feel. I was playing arpeggios over that first example for you, and I think you'll agree, I kind of opened it up a little bit by using, you know, those chromatic kind of moves, slides, bends, little slinky moves between the notes and stuff like that. And I'll just give you an example here of a G7 arpeggio. And I'm adding notes to this. So I'm going to show you the arpeggio, but I'm also going to show you some chromatic moves and bends and slides and stuff like that. Let me just give you an, an example so that you get inspired and don't get scared that uh, you're moving out of the, you know, the pentatonic box here. Okay. So here's a little move um, playing a G7 arpeggio. Here are the notes of the arpeggio. But I'm going to do this. Okay, so I'm sliding into tones, but I'm still resolving to my sweet note of my arpeggio. Very, very important that we still hit those sweet notes, okay, your resolution points. Okay, so don't be scared. Open up the box a little bit. <coughs> Let's l learn some new shapes and um, expand the playing a little bit. The huge value of learning an arpeggio <coughs> to outline your chords is the fact that if you're the guitar player in the band and there's you, the bass player and a drummer, and you start the solo and your G7, B flat 7 and C7 drop out of the mix, when you start your solo, you can still outline those chords and make the chords sound like they're still there by playing the notes of the chords as your melodic phrases, okay? And it's a great way of really coloring the sound of your chords without the chords being there from another instrument. Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to learn a G7 arpeggio, then we're going to jam over each of the notes against the backing track, and um, <coughs> we're going to do that sequentially with each chord in this segment. Okay, first thing to do then, let's learn a G7 arpeggio in position at the third fret. You're going to take your second finger and place that on the third fret, the sixth string, that's the G, okay? First finger on the second fret of the fifth, uh, fifth string is B. Little finger playing a D on the fifth string at the fifth fret. First finger playing F, which is the flat seven. And then the third finger is playing G at the fifth fret on the fourth string. Then we move up the octave 
we're going to play B on the 4th fret, 3rd string, D on the 2nd string, 3rd fret, F again, and that is on the 2nd string at the 6th fret, G is played at the 3rd fret, 6th string, and then there's a stretch, there's a 2 fret stretch to play the B again at the 7th fret. Okay, let me recap with that faster. So we've got G, B, D, F, G, B, D, F, G, B. Now I know you guys are used to playing two notes per string patterns like the minor pentatonic scale shapes. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in the ninth to our G7 arpeggio to give you two notes per string on your arpeggio shapes. Just remember that the ninth, if it's not in the chord, is not a sweet note, but it will give us the opportunity to navigate the strings a little easier and connect tones with chromatics to give us more fluid lines. Let me just play through that with you, adding the ninth. So we're going to play G is our root, A is our nine, B is our major third, D is the fifth, F is our flat seven, G is the root, A is the nine, B is the third, D is the fifth, F is the flat seven, G is our root, A is our nine, and B is the major third. So we've added in A here, we've added in A here, and we've added in A here. Okay, that's a ninth. They're not sweet notes, they're not chord tones, but they will help us navigate this arpeggio. What I'm going to do, I'm going to play against the track and I'm going to play it incredibly boringly. I'm going to sustain each of these notes over the chords or over the G7 chord, okay? So you can hear that each of them is a very strong tone. The 9, I'll play as well, but you're probably going to hear that that isn't the strongest tone to resolve to. But I do advocate that you play over this progression and really hear these tones and practice this arpeggio shape over the chord. And then what we'll do is we'll start looking at some ideas and connections um, within the notes of this arpeggio shape. Okay, so I'm just going to play over that G7 chord, okay? And uh, follow along with me if you can playing the shape and uh, we'll see how that works. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I know that sounds incredibly boring played like that, but what we're going to do is we're going to make it more guitaristic and more guitar friendly by adding slides and um, chromatic moves into those things. The first thing I want to do is to play the G7 arpeggio, but just resolving to our root note, our tonic G, okay, and um, really solidify that resolution. I'm going to jam along to the track. I'm going to coach you through what I'm doing. And then we're going to play the track again so you can jam to it, and I'll still coach you through that. But first of all, all we're going to do is resolve to our G tone, the root of G7, okay? So let's play that and um, I'll guide you through it step by step. <laughs> And you can hear that's a really strong resolution against the chord. Obviously, this is a really boring approach to doing this, but it will all make sense very shortly, and you'll, you'll get to play some really cool things. So you play against the track. I'm going to guide you through it and um, really solidify that resolution to the G. Here we go. OK, so G at the fifth fret on the fourth string. And add vibrato to the G too to let it sustain and sound more musical. Okay, now we're going to move on to our third, and third being the B note in our G7 chord. So we're going to resolve here. I'm going to play it again like we did last time. I'm going to resolve to B, kind of coach you through it and show you where I'm at, and then you're going to play through the track yourselves and resolve to the B tone here. Again, very strong resolution point. Okay, here we go. Okay, 
B at the fourth fret. First finger, nice vibrato on the B, okay? So play through the track yourselves. Try and target that B with the first finger or the second finger playing through the arpeggio. You can use the second finger or or the first finger, okay? Play through the track yourselves and I'll guide you through as we go. Here we go. Using the second finger. Using the first finger. Okay, vibrato on the note two to make it nice and smooth, okay? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna play the fifth and the fifth of G7 is D. And we've got a couple of D's in our arpeggio shape. There's one here. But we can also play with our first finger on the third fret of the second string. We're going to target this one here because I think uh, you'll hear it against the track a little easier than playing the low D here. Okay? So we're going to play a simple lick. I'm going to guide you through it. And then you're going to play against the track yourself. So first time me guiding you through. Here we go. Nice vibrato on the D at the third fret. Okay, here we go, guys. Over to you. And remember, we're targeting the D, which is the fifth of our chord, and it's found at the third fret, second string. Okay, here we go. There it is. Okay, put nice vibrato on it, make it sing. Okay, now you can hear that that is a great resolution against the G7. So recapping real quick, we resolve to G, the root note. We resolve to B, which is the major third. And we just resolve to D, which is our perfect fifth or the fifth against the chord. The last tone that we're going to resolve to is the flattened seventh. And that note against a G7 chord is F. Okay, and we find that here on the fourth string, third fret, or we can use our little finger to play it at the sixth fret on the second string. I'm gonna play a lick where I bend the E up to the F. So we're gonna do that semitone bend thing that we were doing from our last module. And I want you to hear how sweet that sounds against the G7 chord, okay? So I want you guys to try that. I'll play it the first time round, guide you through it, and then you have the track to yourselves to have a jam against it. Okay, here we go. Okay, you hear that E bent up to the F? Now that truly is a sweet note. Okay, <laughs> so here we go, go guys, let's do this. You are gonna bend a semitone up to F from our E. Okay, let's try it. Okay, don't over bend, put nice vibrato on. Okay, that sounds really, really good. One way of checking your semitone bends as well, you could play the note that you're targeting, in this case, F, which is the flat seven, take the E and bend that up to that, okay? So you hear the tone first, then take the bend up to that note. So let's just hear that, okay? Don't overbend it. Sometimes it's better to play it more bluesy and flat than it is to play it sharp. Anyway, that's a great example of a semitone bend over this progression. Okay, so what we're going to do now is I'm going to show you another semitone bend playing up to a B here. Okay, so we're going to take a B flat, which is at the sixth fret, and we can use our little finger supported by the other fingers, and we're going to bend that a semitone to reach the major third B. Okay, so let's try that. I'm going to play it through, guide you through it, and then it's all yours and you can have a go yourselves. Here we go. OK, 
concave, just bending a semitone from the 6th fret to the 7th fret. Okay, you can hear how sweet that is. Now what we do, we can add the semitone bend from B flat to B, and then we'll do a semitone bend from the E up to the F. So you start combining these ideas together. Let me just play that for you, so you'd have Okay. It kind of, kind of gives you a really nice slinky sound. Let me just play that against the track for you, and then it's your turn to try that yourselves. Here we go. Okay, bending from B flat to B. Okay, nice vibrato make it sing and ring out. I hope you agree that sounds really, really cool. We've targeted all of our chord tones and sweet notes over the G7 chord, and um, we've added in some semitone bends there too. What I'd like to do with you now is show you some chromatic moves, and by chromatics, I mean tones that are outside of our arpeggio shape, and we use those as stepping stones to take us back home to our sweet notes, sweet notes being our chord tones. Now a chromatic tone can be any note in between those tones, and quite honestly as long as you don't resolve to them, you can keep moving until you do hit the right tone. What I prefer to do is target the tones that I'm going for and add some lines in between that connect those notes. Let me give you a quick example of that, and a great line that I love to use is working from A on the 2nd fret, 3rd string, play B flat which is a chromatic, up to B, which is our major third, okay? And that's a great move to add in to connect two tones, okay? So, okay. The next one I really love to do is to play the D at the third fret, second string, and connect playing a C sharp, I mean a D sharp, sorry, an E up to F, okay? So I would have this, A, B flat, B, D, D sharp, E, F, okay? And you can reverse that too, you can play from F down to D. Okay, let me give you an example of those over the track, and then I'm going to show you a couple more, but I just want to start simply for now, okay? That's the chromatic. Now you hear the chromatic tones, they're not solid tones against the chord as resolution points, but as long as you hit your key tones, the sweet notes, i.e. F or D over the G chord or the B, everything's going to be great, okay? Let's add in some others. If we take our G at the third fret on the top string, and then we take the B flat, as we know, we bent that up to hit our B, the third. Why don't we connect that by making a slide from the G, B flat, and slide up to our B. So we would have this. Okay, so we're sliding from B flat to B, down to G. We're going to do the same kind of move by sliding from E, that we did semitone bend up to the F. We're going to slide the same way as we did on the top string. We're going to slide into the F and down to our fifth of the chord, which is D. So let's do those two moves over the uh, progression, and then I'm going to let you guys jam over it. Okay, here we go. Resolving to G, resolving to D. Okay. Now that's given us some movement from a very static shape of our G7 arpeggio. As you probably agree, it sounds very boring when you don't add in some tools and techniques. So the semitone bends, the slides, the chromatics all start to make this sound a little more musical. Now I'm going to play one more example for you, just doing anything that I want with chromatics, with bends, with whatever. I'm going to play from the framework of my G7 chord, or G7 arpeggio, sorry, 
and I'm going to add in a bunch of things, okay? Just to give you ideas. I'm not stepping outside of my framework here, but I'm going to do a bunch of stuff just to get you inspired, and then we'll talk about some other techniques and other things that we can do. Okay, here we go. I'm just going to jam to the track. <laughs> Okay, so you can hear now that that spices up an arpeggio, something that you may have thought to begin with to be a very boring shape or a very boring idea. Once you connect those things with chromatics, the notes, you know, that kind of stuff, it actually starts to sound musical. You add in slides, sliding to the B, to the D. Starts to sound a little more slinky, more R&B sounding. You put in semitone bends, like the E playing up to the F that we discussed, bending the B flat up to the B. Kind of sweet crying tone. Okay, starts to sound a little more sexy. So once you've learnt the framework, learn the notes and understand where they are and where your sweet, sweet notes are, start adding in these little chromatic moves and connecting the tones, okay? And then it will start to sound more musical to you. We're going to wrap this one up. I'm going to jam out to this. And uh, obviously we've provided tracks for you to jam to as well. And we're going to move on to the next chord that we're going to play in position, which will be our B-flat 7 chord, okay? So I'm just going to jam out to the G7, and then we'll start looking at the B-flat 7 chord. Thank you. 